Hello and welcome to today's webinar on machine learning. I'm going to wait two more minutes to give participants a chance to log in. Uh, so please stand by. We'll be starting in about two minutes. Once again, uh, we are just waiting one or two more minutes uh, to allow people the opportunity to log into today's webinar. We'll begin in approximately one minute. Hello to all, good morning. My name is Chris Screenack. I am a Partner Solutions Architect and the Global Segment Lead for Machine Learning. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our continuing series on Amazon SageMaker's built-in algorithms. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at neural topic modeling with the Senior Solutions Architect, Chris Burns. Before we begin, though, I'd just like to point out that you can ask questions at any time during this webinar by using the question panel on the screen on your right. Uh, so please do take that opportunity to do that uh, for you know short questions, uh, things uh, that can be handled immediately. I'll be answering those interactively. However, there will be a, a, a longer Q&A session uh, hosted by our speaker, Chris Burns, at the end of today's webinar. So that said, I'd like to hand it over to our senior solutions architect in AI and machine learning, Chris Burns. Chris, thank you for the great intro and hello to everyone once again. Uh, this is my third or fourth time behind the mic on this series, so I certainly appreciate the uh, the continued attendance and I, I have not been voted off the air yet, so I guess that's always a bonus. So before I get started today, I wanted to very, very, the first thing I wanted to do was remind you that these deep dive webinars are a jumping off point. They're not an end unto themselves. And there is a team here at AWS specifically built and staffed to help you, our, our partners. So this is a partner only uh, webinar, or I'm sorry, partner, partner invite only webinar. And we're here to help you guys out. Uh, so what we have is we have uh, obviously myself, I'm based in Texas. We also now have, finally, uh, happy to to um, to announce that we have presence globally. I'm seeing some familiar names in the attendee list. I'm seeing some uh, some some uh, domain names from from the UK and from e EMEA and such. So we have uh, Alejandro now in Berlin. We have Bogdan in London. Uh, I get myself and, and Chris here. On, uh, in the US. And we are also ha have three open rec recs that we're going to try to fill. Uh, we're working diligently to get those filled to provide even more service to our partners. So if you have any questions after today's webinar, I know when I'm taking in information that's relatively new or, or I'm not, um, you know, I'm not adept at that, my questions come later. They don't come right there on the spot. So f please feel free to, to email any one of us and we'll get those questions answered as soon as possible. I only ask that you send the email via your partner domain name. Otherwise, you'll probably uh, go to a, you'll probably get filtered. So in the next hour, <clears throat> we're gonna talk all about NTM. I'm gonna break down the agenda here. What is 
neurotopic modeling, what it can do. How does it differ from LDA? Uh, if you've been listening to the series, we did do a, a webinar on LDA not too long ago, before the holidays. The NTM algorithm is built 100% by Amazon data scientists. So we're going to get into the details about what the differentiators are by using the Amazon NTM algorithm. We're going to talk about when to choose NTM over Comprehend, or maybe even when to choose it over LDA. So we'll get into a little bit of differences there. We're going to talk about preparing your data for NTM training, and then we're going to talk about training. Now, this is actually my first webinar where I'm not going to live code anything in a notebook. I don't think you're going to lose any value from that. There's uh, two great example notebooks that are built into SageMaker now, and there are some more in GitHub that you can use. And those do an excellent job of, of walking you through and re, uh, re -summar or summarizing and, and capturing what I'm going to talk about today in, in practice. So with that, let's just let's jump in. Neural topic modeling. So we're probably all familiar with topic modeling. So I'm not, I'm not going to spend too much time on the concept of topic modeling, but obviously because it is the, uh, the, the topic of, of the webinar, it's going to come up frequently. NTM is an unsupervised learning algorithm that's used to organize a corpus of documents into topics that contain word groupings based on their statistical distribution. So if you have any familiarity at all with topic modeling, that's pretty cookie cutter definition of topic modeling. And what it really does is it provides a means for you to visualize the contents of large collections of text in terms of learned topics. We're gonna to talk a lot about latent representations uh, today. In just a bit, I'm gonna throw out some, some vocabulary definitions so that we're all on the same page. Another thing I wanted to mention before I dive in is that these webinars, we have a very, very broad audience. And it can sometimes be difficult to prepare a, a one hour webinar and balance depth with breadth. So if we don't go deep enough for you, or if you think we've left something out, please feel free to, to email us and we'll try to get that incorporated into the next into the next webinar. As a matter of fact, I still I, I believe I owe I owe responses to a couple of folks from the last webinar I did. I did not forget about you. I'm just uh, a little bit behind. Okay. Now, late representations. Sorry for that tangent there. This this is um, a concept that we need to be cognizant of when we're talking about topic modeling and the limitations of topic modeling, because there's no guarantee that our topics are going to align with how humans might naturally think. And this is this is where topic modeling meets sentiment analysis. Many times you're going to see LDA or, or other alg NLP algorithms say topic modeling slash uh, sentiment analysis. And I want to draw a little bit of a de delineation point between those two, because one is easier than the other. One is more reliable than the other. Now, to dive into this a little bit, uh, one of my favorite examples of uh, ambiguity, so I'm, I'm gonna be back up. So we know what NTM is, topic modeling. And when, you should, when should you use it? When should you not use it? If you have a scenario where uh, there's sarcasm or innuendo or double entendres in the text, you need to think carefully about how you're going to apply topic modeling to that. And this is one of my favorite examples of all time of ambiguity. We have a sentence here. I saw a man on a hill with a telescope. And there are many different ways, I've just listed the four here, uh, of many different ways of interpreting that. Now for topic modeling, we kind of get a pass because the topics in that sentence are man, hill, telescope, almost the nouns. But when we start to get into sentiment and, and deeper meaning, you can see how it can get confusing very, very quick. That's, that's really sort of the bad news. So I didn't mean to open this up on a, on a, on a down note, uh, but there are many use cases today that, uh, that are, are in practice. They are working very, very well. They're very, very efficient. Uh, content personalization is one. Uh, matter of fact, we have a, we're working on a specialized workshop that sort of encapsulates this um, forecasting and personalized personalization. But this is going to allow you, you to utilize NTM to understand related documents uh, based on phrases or topic similarities. So pretty much the standard definition of topic modeling again. Semantic search. Social, and, social analytics and information management. Information management is a really uh, popular, we'll call it a low hanging fruit use case, if you will, of neural topic modeling. You're gonna see uh, you know, maybe some metadata generation. You're gonna see support tickets classified by priority by using NTM. You're gonna see a lot of very practical, very useful use cases there. And they're, they're excellent uh, jumping off points if you're new to NLP or if you're just new to um, neural topic modeling. Apologize. 
I thought I skipped a slide, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> so now that I've laid out what neural topic modeling is, it's, you might be asking yourself the question, should I use NTM or should I use Amazon Comprehend? And a theme you're gonna, I'm gonna come back to over and over again in this webinar is just really depends on your scenario, it depends on your data set. Uh, in machine learning, it's very, very difficult to classify use cases as one size fits all. Data is always, uh, it's, it's got uh, it's got the differences, there's got different scenarios, you have different requirements. So look to NTM if you need fine grain control over the layers of your model. If you need to customize the vocabulary, for instance, the comprehend from medical uh, came from this uh, from this idea that we needed to customize vocabulary. And I've seen this before. I've seen this on uh, stock exchange floors uh, in areas where there's a, a certain vernacular or there's a lot of terminology used over and over again that normal normal people would not understand or recognize. So that's a customized vocabulary. Also, if you have regulatory hurdles and you just simply can't use a, a service, you have to uh, maybe train this train this on SageMaker and Amazon and maybe take that model, put it on an edge site or something like that. NTM can fill that gap. When you want to consider comprehend, Maybe you're new to machine learning. Maybe you have tight deadlines. Maybe you're just oversubscribed and you simply don't have uh, the, the time to dedicate to something as detailed as uh, completing an NTM process. The, the requirement here is if it can be done with an existing service, if your requirements can be met with an existing service, it's not logical to add complexity to the process, even if you want to learn about it. Uh, I, I would not use that as an excuse to use NTM over Comprehend because what's going to happen is the scenario is probably going to present itself again in the future. And if you have to use NTM then, then you can take the opportunity to learn more about it. So my, 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 rule, my, my advice to everybody is if it can be done with an existing service, choose the existing service. Also, Comprehend has got some built-in features that are very, very handy. Here you see this image here. We have keyword topic groups. Uh, we have document relationship to topics. So it's not it's not exactly a bag of words, but it does break it out very, very nicely for you. It's available in, in super clean JSON that's callable from, from any any wet language or, or service that can call an API. Whereas with NTM, you're gonna have to build all that yourself on the back end. So I had mentioned I was gonna get into a bit of vocabulary. So let me do that now. Again, just a quick reminder, we have a, a large array of, of skill levels on these webinars. So if this is all you know, very, very old school to you or old hat to you, I do apologize. But the, the, the content, I'm sorry, <laughs> the concept of latent representation, this means that variables are, are not directly observed, but they're inferred by other variables. And I'll give you an example of that is if I see the words uh, bike, car, train, mileage, speed, I can infer that that's a topic of, or about mobility or transportation or some, some type of other uh, word that you can, you can infer. That's what latent representation is. And because the languages are so nuanced, it's gonna be very, very difficult to actually spit out a topic that is not a latent representation. Now, perplexity. Perplex, perplexity and the topic coherence, the second one there, or the third one, are probably the cornerstones of this webinar, the cornerstones of NTM. Perplexity is the measure measures a model's capability to describe documents according to a generative process based on the learned set of topics. Now, I want to draw a couple of distinctions here. Generative process, this is uh, this is versus a discriminative process. So if you have a classification problem, it's discriminative. Generative, almost it's a, it's a, I like to think of it as a, as, as you, as the algorithm learns, as it goes. And now this is an optimization target. So perplexity is is a what, what I mean by optimization target, it means we influence the convergence of this model based on parameters, that's optimizing. We wanna optimize for perplexity. Now, coherence, also known as topic coherence, also known as topic interpretability. This measures the model's quality by the semantic similarity of the words that you see in each topic. And a good model will have words that are semantically similar. Now, this is your, normally up to, you know, to up until 2018, in the past, it was measured by a process called uh, MPMI, Normalized Pointwise Mutual Information. The downside to that method was that it requires a very, very large corpus of documents. And also, the, the key point here is topic coherence is not optimized in the learning process. It is evaluated after training. So one of the goals of NTM was to be able to optimize not only on perplexity, but optimize on topic coherence. 
Now, I've brought up LDA a few times, the latent Dirichlet allocation. Uh, this is not a webinar on LDA. We have an excellent webinar already archived on LDA, but obviously I have to bring it up just to tell you about the differences between LDA and NTM. The objectives of the two are identical. Topic modeling, those are the, uh, the purpose of these algorithms. The means are very different. Uh, in LDA, you're going to have a Gibbs sampling. You're going to have a variational Bayes inference. Uh, Gibbs sampling is a, it's a Monte Carlo. It's a Markov chain uh, for generating samples of, of, of joint distributions. And the uh, variational Bayes, of course, is a Bayes inference for discovering the maximum likelihood of estimates. That's not neural networks there. So what we have now with NTM is we've introduced neural variation inference. And I have a link at the end of this to the uh, an excellent paper on what neural variational inference is. For the purposes of this webinar and for the next half an hour, we just need to know it's a, it's a flexible framework to offer more expressive results. And it's an attempt by Amazon to solve for the intractability of Bayesian inference when dimensionality increases to the point that the Bayes uh, breaks down. So what, we, what we've done here is we have the same concept of LDA, topic modeling, but we've inserted uh, a neural variational inference rather than the traditional means for, uh, for, for convergence. And what's the result? As I already mentioned in the previous slide, the result is we get optimizable coherence awareness. That means with our hyperparameters, with our with our tuning of layers, with our data inputs, we can optimize on coherence in addition to uh, perplexity. Now I talked about this. Well, obviously, this series is a SageMaker built-in. So what we, when we say built-in, it doesn't just mean that we've prepackaged existing industry standard algorithms for you to use. There's more to the to the SageMaker built-ins than might might meet the eye. And, and these algorithms they come with value adds is I guess the best way to to term it all, to term that is you know there's added value, there's bonuses, there's increased uh, convenience or some type of benefits to using these built-ins. So when it comes to the value adds of NTM, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes talking about that. We, I already mentioned that the MPMI, that's that's old and busted now. So the new hotness is WETC, Word Embedding Topic Coherence. It's uh, and it's computationally efficient. The difference here is MPMI calculated after training and required a very, very large sampling of, of text. Whereas Word Embedding, the WETC, it is computationally efficient. So if you have a small corpus of documents, WETC is gonna to try to match that uh, and without losing, without losing, I'll use the word accuracy here. So this image here is a quick comparison to LDA and the new uh, neural variational models. And we use the 20 news group data set. The best numbers are in bold. I do apologize, I blew it up a little bit, um, it might be a little bit blurry. But we see that the LDA with the collapsed Gibbs performed well on complexity, but the MPMI scores is relatively low. And we see with the neural models, NTMR, we get great scores with perplexity as well as MPMI. You could almost say that the perplexity and the topic coherence is analogous to the variance and the bias trade-off when you're talking about a, a, a traditional image classification or maybe a, a, a random forest. So we want to we want to optimize on both perplexity as well as topic coherence, and we see that with this new word embedding topic coherence, we can achieve a, an excellent optimization between those two. I highly recommend. This paper, uh, uh, Ding Ran Ding, he is a, an Amazon machine learning uh, data scientist, excuse me, out of New York, I believe, and they did a great job with this algorithm. It's very performant, and there's a couple more benefits that we'll talk about, so I don't just sound like a like a rah rah salesman. The auxiliary vocabulary channel. This was to me, this was a big, this was a big ad to me. I, I was really happy when I saw this. I don't call myself a data scientist. I call myself a machine learning practitioner. As such, I, I have very little patience for certain aspects <laughs> of, of the data science world. And one of them was um, you know, the, the embedding and the mapping of topics to a vocabulary list. That can be cumbersome. And what we have now with the auxiliary vocabulary channel, think of it as an add-on. We have training channels. We have test channels. We have validation channels. If you use SageMaker, hopefully you're familiar with the term channel. It's synonymous with an S3 uh, subdirectory dedicated to that uh, subject of either training, test, or uh, in this case, vocabulary. The first image on the top there, we took from synthetic data. So those numbers are just synthetically generated already. Uh, the embedding was already done. And what, what, what we have here is, well, it's just a bunch of numbers. In the bottom picture, of course, we've used the auxiliary vocabulary channel 
and now we can see that the words are right here, easy to learn. Now, so this is this is an excellent time saver. If you're doing some hyperparameter optimization and you're doing many, many permutations of this algorithm and you want to just scan through the CloudWatch logs rather than having to, to create some kind of mapping mechanism, that's a it's a big value add. And also it's a great feature for those new to NLP. I think it's a, it's it was did a great job of helping uh, kickstart. Uh, the learning process rather than having to worry about the nuances of, of mapping word embeddings. And now to drill down a little bit further on WETC, this is uh, measures the similarity of words. So it's a topic coherence metric. I'll just go back to that. And we see here it's calculated with each topic. That's the, uh, the large rectangular, I'm sorry, the vertical box. And then we also give you the average score. Typical values, now mathematically values range from zero to one, but normally you're gonna see values ranging from 0.2 to 0.8. And now 0.8 would be almost um, unheard of, whereas a 0.2 would probably just be um, a baseline for, for noise. And now you can see some of these topics in this particular, there are 20 topics in this particular training. Some of them range all the way up, I see 41 here, so, so very, very, those are those are excellent levels. I don't want to demean the a mid a mid metric level of 0.4. And now we also have topic uniqueness. So one interesting thing I want to draw your attention to here. Again, on the left, we're showing our synthetic data, and we see that the WETC score is not present. You have to use the auxiliary vocabulary channel if you want to also use WETC. That's dependent on that on that mapping. And also we see for TU, just to describe this really quick, the topic uniqueness, uh, we, we want we want as much uniqueness as possible. And so the measurement of this is between uh, one, one K and one. So if we have t K topics, so we have capital K there, and we're gonna take um, each word in that topic, I'm trying to do the math in my head, I apologize, that, Essentially, the, the, the calculation is such that it's between 1K and 1. So if we see this, the topic uniqueness of the synthetic data, five topics, so it would be between 1, one fifth and 1 or 0.2 and 1.0, we see that it's the synthetic data did very, very, very poorly in the topic uniqueness. And that was simply because it was, uh, again, simply generated synthetic data. But let this be a, you know, a sort of a lesson if you're taking a shortcut on synthetic data, uh, the topic uniqueness score may suffer. But we see on actual data, the topic uniqueness score of 0.75 is actually is actually quite good. All right, so I'm gonna pause here. I've spent almost you know, 10 minutes, a good portion of the entire webinar on the differentiators of NTM. And so just to summarize WETC, uh, that's word embedding topic comprehension comprehension is in that that's uh, optimizable it is uh, computationally efficient and whereas MPMI is out so what that means is it's it's savings on training essentially auxiliary vocabulary channel that's going to map the word embeddings to your vocabulary for you no more no more needing to map those uh, manually well or obviously we're saying manually but obviously you have some kind of scripting or code process in place and then topic uniqueness Good topic models should generate topics that are unique. So we want a, a higher a higher score. We'll move on to preparing data for NTMN training. Now this is again not a one size fits all scenario. So so take this with a grain of salt. Some of these steps may be done in different orders. This is a general guideline. For preparing data. And the first one is the data source, is the data source known to be good? It's easy for us to use known good data sources in our examples. You partners, you have to go out into the real world where it's very messy and you have to try to um, you know, uh, clean these data sets prior to, to, to training. But the data source needs to be free of corruption. I mean, you gotta be careful of white, if the white space has been stripped out, if there are markup symbols, it really depends what kind of documents you're dealing with here. So HTML, there's a lot of noise in those type of documents. Then you're gonna move on to tokenizing. This is also this is also covered in much greater detail in the LDA webinar. I'll just throw that out there. So you have to determine what delimiter is going to determine a discrete block of text. Do so you want to go by paragraph? Do you want to go by sentence? Do you want to go by document? That's going to happen in your tokenizing phase. There's also an example of tokenizing in the NTM notebook. So while I won't dig into the details of that 
here on the call or on the webinar, it is in the uh, it is in the notebook. And then you have your stemming in your in your lemma ties. If you've done any NLP at all, those are going to be very familiar to you. Um, and it looks like I copied and pasted <laughs> accidentally. So that is not the definition of stemming and, and lemmatizing. To, to stem is to find the root word uh, of, of, of a particular uh, piece of vocabulary. And lemmatizing is you want to group. If I have run, running, runs, I want to group those all. That's what the, uh, the, the practice of, of lemmatizing is. So I'll get that fixed before this uh, slide deck is, is uh, distributed. Now, our NTM parameters are of type float, uh, float of type of float32. So your input data has to be converted to MP float32 as well. That was a that caught me the first time I was going through this to to practice on a on a data set I had picked out, and it took me a minute to uh, read through the docs and make sure that I had my my input data in the form of float32. And then NTM likes record I/O protobuf format. So plenty of utilities on in SageMaker documentation and in our past webinars to show you how to convert into that format for training. And then finally, uh, the, if you use the NLTK lemmatizer that we use in the notebook, that's going to create uh, an array for you of a unique vocabulary. And it's super easy to just uh, pipe that into a, a file and send off to your vocab auxiliary channel so that you have that vocabulary ready to go. All right, when we get to the training, portion. We also have introduced something called subsampling. Uh, this is an excellent feature too. I probably should have put this in the differentiator section rather than the training section, but what, what are you going to do? So typical training, you pass the entire data set to the algorithm. You feed it the, the entire data set to the algorithm with each epoch. With subsampling, we can choose to send only a portion. It is randomly, uh, randomly selected and sent off. And so what we get, if you look at this graphic here, um, is you can get Time savings. Don't don't pay attention to the epochs because uh, the with the second instance here where we had 49 epochs, the data set is 80% smaller. So the epochs are going to go much faster, and we see that we had a significant, uh, more than 20% time and savings with very little loss, uh, very little loss at all in our in our balance between our TU our, and our WETC. Now subsampling is controlled by hyperparameter which I thought was an excellent way of doing that because what you can do now is you can just add that to your uh, hyperparameter optimizations when you want to diff test different permutations. So if you want to test it very, very low subsampling and very, very high subsampling, you can get that range automated and tested and see if you can still optimize on these metrics and, and decrease training time. When it comes to the actual training, there's only two Hyperparameters required uh, the feature dimensions, which is you know pretty standard, and, and we have a minimum of one. <laughs> I'm not sure what you would do with one feature, uh, and a maximum of one million. Now I want to put that into just a little bit of perspective here. One million unique words or vocabulary size is very big. Uh, that's the scientific phrase for that. Very big. If I take an example of the uh, Tolstoy's War and Peace, there are 20,400 and some change word unique words. In that uh, in that writing, so to have a vocabulary size of one million is a very very large, and then the number of topics. This is something you're going to play with depending on your needs, depending on your requirements, and what what you hope to achieve. Uh, the minimum is two, of course, but in the maximum is one thousand. One of the uh, little trick that you can do here is if your input tokens, they, so you have uh, so many documents, if you set your number of topics to less than the documents, what you've done is actually created a a means of of, uh, of reducing your dimensionality. And you've eliminated as documents that are essentially, um, you know, they've they've scored so low that uh, that they probably don't have a good topic information in them, and you've reduced that dimensionality. Now the rest of the training, all adjustable here. You're going to see the uh, the usual suspects when it comes to neural networks. Uh, this this one, uh, hopefully you can see my mouse here, but this number of patients epochs. Uh, SageMaker is going to do you a favor, and it's going to train. Uh, it's going to look for the most efficient. Uh, you know, loss function and epochs and stop early if you don't increase uh, efficiency over so many epochs. And so you can you can set that here by the number of patients epochs. If you say, if I go three epochs without any improvement, go ahead and kill it. But you can fine tune that. Everything else here should be somewhat familiar to you when in terms of uh, in terms of neural network parameters.
And wow, I went through that much faster than I thought. So it looks like we still have lots and lots of time for uh, for questions. Let's see here. So the only question posted here, oh, here we go. Chris, you can just uh, handle those, go ahead. One second, I gotta adjust my window size. It's not cooperating. So the session will be online shortly afterwards. It, this session will be online afterwards. I can't speak to when. Um, if you've been to any webinars in the past, we have a, a great asset in Sue Ewig that manages this for us. Uh, matter of fact, you might have even heard Chris and I talking before the web, webinar started because we weren't sure if our mic was hot or not. But she she will uh, manage that. There's a couple of permutations it needs to go through before it's distributed uh, in, a, in a public venue, but it will be it will be socialized afterwards. Uh, and so, can the next question is can NTM be applied to language other languages? Right now, it only supports English out of the box, um, and I don't know what the roadmap has in store for other languages, but I'll definitely get back to you on that. That's a question that I'm sure the service team gets quite a bit and they should have some idea of what the uh, what the roadmap looks like for that. All right, just wait here, see if any other questions come in. Chris, anything you think I glossed over too quick that you think I should talk about a little bit more? Well, I I think I'd say generally that uh, 2018 was the year of natural language processing, and there were there were quite of innovations um, in data science last year. Um, so I think these are highly uh, useful algorithms. Um, one thing that I'll just add also is that with all the SageMaker built-in algorithms, you get automated memory management and scaling. Uh, one of the most frequent questions that I get when uh, I'm working with folks in SageMaker is, you know, they're using Keras um, or maybe just straight up TensorFlow and, and they're running out of memory when they're running their models. Uh, and I, upon more questions, I determine, hey, you can use a linear learner or you can use uh, NTM. You know, try using some of these built-in algorithms because the memory management is built in. Not only can you grow out of a single GPU, but you can also grow out of uh, a, out of a, of a machine, in other words, a, a more than eight GPUs and into a cluster of systems. Chris, I, I see some other questions coming in, so I'll just, uh, I'll let you do that. Yeah, so one question here, any recommendation of a primer for this, uh, for this topic, for this course? I, I really genuinely recommend you hit all of these links. Um, Looks like I copied and pasted again <laughs> incorrectly, but uh, visit the unique links. <laughs> I apologize for that. I'm going to laugh it off. I'm going to laugh my own uh, my own ineptitude off there. But especially the uh, NTM paper at archive.org, and then also there are two two SageMaker notebooks that are in built into any every any notebook instance that you spin up. One is very very basic. It's going to use synthetic data. It's going to give you a good idea of the flow of NTM uh, training. And the second one is, is more advanced. You're going to see the tokenization. You're going to see the lemmatization. You're going to see the conversion to MP float 32. And so you're also, and also you're going to see a great example of the vocabulary auxiliary channel used, which I think is just really a no brainer to, to use that. So I recommend all these sources. You go through all those sources and I think you'll have a great, a great foundation to go ahead and tackle your own data set. Or maybe just, you know, if you're up for the challenge, grab your data set and, and, and switch it in for the uh, the second notebook, the one that's under the um, the uh, scientific theory section of SageMaker. And then, so here's a question, how can we get the list of these links? So this 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 very presentation will be distributed after the, we're, we're live right now, but this will be sent to you. Um, you're gonna get a link at your email address that you use to register. And so you get to hit, listen to this all over again, if you so choose, and you can snap, grab these links out of that. And I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement. Uh, it's a good, map, a good map for determining which algorithm to use out of the numerous ones. Um, again, machine learning starts with answering a question. How do I improve this process? How do I solve this problem? And from that, you, you derive your requirements. 
to solve it? What pieces of information do you need? And then from that point, it should point you to the algorithm. Very rarely do you start with an algorithm and say, okay, here's a great algorithm. What problems do I want to solve with it? It's a, it's a bottoms up uh, uh, solutioning process. But NTM, uh, you're going to, again, comprehend. If, you, if you're very new to NLP, I recommend comprehend. Get familiar with that. Uh, get familiar with how comprehend gives you results back so that you can understand what latent representation means. Uh, so that you understand an idea of what topics per document and, and the similarities mean and then step up to an ntm or lda if you so if you so choose uh, we have both of these options available to you and the the only analogy i could think of i was trying to think of a great analogy for when to use ntm and when to use lda and it's very circumstantial you know sometimes you, you need a um, a five star socket and sometimes you need a 12 star socket but they both uh, you know turn turn a bolt the same way so you could try both. Uh, SageMaker, I think, you know, is, is cheap enough. If your document corpus is not too large, try both and maybe average out the scores. Maybe t maybe t use both and average out the results for, for your topics. And then you're going to get a good feel for which one works in, in which of your scenarios. And then we have a question here. Any plans to integrate with things like TensorFlow.js? Um, I don't know. So that's a roadmap question that I can't speculate on. I do apologize, uh, but we do have uh, we do have Neo, and I'm not an expert on TensorFlow.js. I do apologize for for that, but we have the ability to train a model and with Neo deploy that to many different endpoints. So if you can work to apply uh, a pre-trained model to TensorFlow.js, maybe try that out. Um, otherwise, um, I can't I can't speak to the roadmap. I will definitely take that question back to the team and see what answer that they give me. But out of the box, I, we don't have support for TensorFlow.js today. And it looks like those are all the questions we have. I'll give it one more minute here for any other questions to come in. And it looks like once again, I, I have finished early. I, I do apologize. I feel a little guilty. I could have, I could have filled the next uh, 15 minutes with more content. I got a habit of talking too fast and speaking through things. So if there's anybody who wants to go back to any of the slides that uh, that were in the in the slide deck or in the webinar or visit, revisit any topics, if I glossed over something too quickly, please let me know. We can we can use this time that we have together and go back over those. Chris, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just throw something out. Um, the topic of continuous integration and deployment and the cadence for retraining models is certainly much more on people's minds these days. Um, I mean, I think we've gone from a point where people are just asking, what is machine learning and how do I do it, to now folks are, are using it and putting it in production. So obviously, uh, CICD uh, determining a, a cadence and a workflow for CICD is, is, is much more of a topic. Is there anything that occurred to you in developing this webinar uh, that might be special for doing um, uh, neural topic modeling and, and creating a cadence for refreshing your models. Yeah, I think the need for retraining when it comes to topic modeling is paramount. It's actually, I don't want to say it's more important. I don't want to use that phrase, but if you have an image classification, I like to pick on image classification for some reason. You, you know when you start to get model decay or data drift because you're, you're going to start to see many, many more misses than hits. But when it comes to topic modeling, because we've introduced latent representation, it's very difficult to, to validate the accuracy in an automated manner. This is a great opportunity for human in the loop uh, retraining. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see a need to constantly retrain, refine. And as your documentation grows, you're going to see which documents are more important to your training process and which ones you can omit. And then what that gives you is it gives you a better quality data set, which should translate to greater accuracy when it comes to metrics for per perplexity, as well as topic comprehension. So I guess to, to summarize you know, Chris's question there, retraining is likely, far likely more important when it comes to NLP than when it comes, because this is, also, if you recall, we talked about generative processes versus discriminative processes. So as a generative process, the retraining is going to be paramount. So we did get a new question in. Uh, is there a good way for filtering timestamps or erroneous info in data when doing NLP? 
That is a classic data prep problem. Um, Timestamps are going to not play um, a, a very productive role in NLP. As a matter of fact, you're going to want to probably create a mapping mechanism yourself for that. Uh, remember, this is this, we're talking about vocabulary, we're talking about text, we're talking about topics and, and topic comprehension. So introducing the idea of a timestamp, I think, is going to be incredibly difficult. And if you have a specific use case that you're working on with that and you want to share with us, we can you know, send that over to us and we'll see what kind of advice we can get there. But when I hear the phrase timestamps, I, I, I get I get nervous <laughs> when it comes to training because I'm thinking, ah, it's just really going to it's going to be very, very difficult to, to understand that as a topic. And so another question in can NTM do well in a corpus of text where we already know the topic and it's somewhat narrow, say medical text? on cancer treatment? And the answer there is yes. Matter of fact, we have comprehension for medical. It is a, a, a sub, what we'll call it a, a sub module, if you will, of comprehend where the vocabulary is specific to healthcare. Now, if you want to take that even further into a, a granular use case where it's specific to cancer terminology. And what's also interesting about healthcare is you, you almost introduce, you introduce a, if you have a, we have topic comprehension we talked about. So latent representation, walk, uh, bike, car equals transportation. But when it comes to medical, you, you can infer the state of a person. So if you see a condition X and symptom Y, not, all, not only can you infer with late representation that these are uh, it's a disease present, but you can then infer the state of the patient in terms of sick or, or not sick. So drilling down into more specific vocabulary is, is um, oops. Sorry about that. So yeah, I, the answer is yes, an emphatic yes when it comes to uh, can you use NTM on specific vocabulary. So Chris, I, I, I think we're winding down now. Uh, yeah. Phenomenal job. Uh, excellent. Uh, why don't uh, do you have any other uh, pointers? Obviously, this screen here. Uh, if we could uh, get this to the audience as quickly as possible, um, I'm, I'm sure some have done a screen capture on it. But uh, that too. Yep. Would be I will. I will correct this. I will remove these duplicates. <laughs> My topic yep. comprehension on this slide is very low, <laughs> so we'll get that fixed and we'll get it sent out. And, and again, uh, this webinar was really meant to just give you an overview of the the why on NTM and so for the for the uh, for the how and to see the value in person I recommend you you know you try it out get, grab yourself some some documentation that you have for a use case and, and run it through there and again questions please please email us we, we get very few questions after these webinars when you actually dive, dive into the work so only two only two things could be true one is that you uh, we do such a good job with these webinars that you become instant experts on the topic and you no longer need our help or the other one is that um, for some reason, you're you're afraid to email us, so please don't don't be afraid to, to email. Fantastic. So, uh, with that said, I'll, I'll thank you again, Chris. Uh, this is an ongoing series uh, where we're covering all of SageMaker's growing built-in uh, functionality, not just algorithms, but uh, of course we have. Uh, ground Truth, a uh, new feature uh, which we'll be covering in the future. The very next webinar is for Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th. I'll be giving a presentation on factorization machines and recommendation engines, and I'll be covering the very important new utility that we have, which is called object to vec uh, So definitely set your calendar for that. So thank you again, Chris. Uh, thank you all for joining, and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Yep. Thank you, everybody.